All right, well, welcome to our uh, MJF lab. Um, so these are the two pieces of equipment that make up kind of an MJF 3D printing system, if you will. Um, you have the printer, um, which obviously does the 3D printing work, and then you have a processing station, um, which is essentially where you unpack builds and then reload the cart with material and get the build cart ready to go into the printer. So, essentially the most expensive vacuum cleaner you've ever seen would be the best way to describe it. So, uh, I'm just going to start walking you guys through what goes into getting that machine up and running over there. So, it starts with uh, unpacking the last build. Alright, so uh, we have a build that was run yesterday and then put in the system for cooling. Um, and as we can see, uh, fast cooling is finished. Um, so just to help you understand this a little bit. Uh, so this right here is a build bucket, build cart, build station. Um, what do they actually call it? An HP Jet Fusion 3D build unit. There you go. That's what you actually call it. I can never remember that much, so we call it a bucket. Um, so, uh, you've got one there, and then uh, we're going to be putting it in there uh, once we've unloaded it and uh, got it uh, reloaded with more powder for the build we just set up. So, uh, we'll start with uh, kind of walking through a couple things here. Um, so, when these parts print, uh, it's centering the nylon, which means melting it together. Um, and so that means that this build bucket gets really, really hot. Uh, the powder inside of it gets, you know, obviously right up to the sintering temperature or the melting temperature of nylon. So you can imagine after you finish a build of, you know, a couple inches or even the full 15 inches, there's just a lot of heat into this, uh, into this powdered mass. So we have to cool it and we can't just quench it. We can't just pull it out and just start digging in there even if we could find a way to keep ourselves from getting burned um, because it might cause part quality issues maybe parts warp or things like that because they cool too fast so um, I mean it can take you know it can take 15 to you know potentially up to maybe 20 hours to fully cure and cool one of these buckets to the point where you can get in there and start you know breaking your parts out and everything like that so um, you know, the machine itself can kind of print at almost a, an, an inch an hour, you know, inch, you know, a little less, a little more, depending on settings and things like that. But um, then you got to cool it. And, you know, they call it fast cooling, but it still takes quite a bit of time. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys a time lapse of me uh, breaking this build out and uh, getting it, uh, getting all the parts pulled out and getting it ready to be refilled with more powder. Okay, and there you have it. We have unpacked the previous build, cleaned up the uh, build bucket there, and, uh, and then repacked it with more powder. So we are ready to pull that bad boy out and get it stuck in the machine. So, all right, so you pretty much just uh, come over here and uh, eject, and it does its disconnecting uh, routine. Here it unlock, and uh, now you just give her the old heave ho. And there we have it, ready to go. 
So next up, uh, we'll be starting our build.